Okay, good afternoon everybody. We will have our broadcast section first today and then follow on to the daily newspapers. And we'll begin today's broadcast section with Sky Sports News and James. Good afternoon, Graham. The Premier League announced this week that they've brought more than 100 charges against Manchester City for alleged breaches of their financial rules. When you heard that news, what were your initial thoughts? I didn't really have too many thoughts, to be honest. It's um, it's something I can't really comment on. I don't know anything about it. Um, and um, it's something that Manchester City have to deal with. We um, We just focus on ourselves. Do you think, though, hearing the breaches and the severity of it will act as a reminder for clubs in the Premier League to ensure they're careful with how they do their business moving forward? Well, as I understand it, it's just they're just charges, as I understand it, and the world we're in, I think, certainly in this country, you're innocent until you're proven guilty. So it's, it's again, it's not for me to comment on. Is it a good thing, though, that the Premier League are maybe clamping down on it to ensure that you know the league? It's treated in a, a fair and proper way. Well, I think that in any competition, if you draw, come out come out of this specific case in any competition, you need to make sure everybody's abiding by the rules, of course. Right, moving on, uh, Mark Kukurea. A few weeks ago, he said that he was coping with something in his private life. Um, he's been under quite a bit of scrutiny from Chelsea fans of late. Uh, how's he coping at the moment, and is it something he's still dealing with off the field? Well, yeah. Uh, they're um, they're human beings and they've got private lives and they have um, things going on and um, Mark's not the only one <clears throat> and um, at the same time you understand supporters that they, they they pay the money the most important thing is is what's happening on that pitch in the ninety minutes but nevertheless you have to deal with stuff in your private life um, but no he's I mean he's uh, he's fine he's he's um, he's going about his work he. he he knows he's probably not in the best moment of form he's he's ever been in, but that's he won't be the only player that has to go through those moments. Um, he's a player that the club invested uh, money in in the summer, and um, it's our job to try and help him and support him and um, and and bring him to the place where he's showing everybody his qualities. I did notice yesterday that there was a tweet liked by uh, Todd Bowley that stated it was a article written by Football London that said that Marco Gray is not good enough to play for the club. Now I saw that that was liked on social media by Top Valley. I know you're not necessarily on social media yourself, but for a player to potentially see something like that, that must be quite disheartening. I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't comment. Um, it's, it's nothing that I would say is a reflection of, of, of Todd in any way. Um, but I don't know how social media works. Um, like I said, everybody here is really supportive of Mark and we're trying to help him um, get back to a level that he can get to and enjoy his football because if a player's enjoyed his football, the chances are they'll, they're going to play well. Uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, future has been reported that he might be off on loan this week. Is there any truth in <coughs> that? No, no, nothing to report. Um, he's been training with us this week, training really well. So conducting himself well, uh, Really good professional, um, supporting his teammates, and as as I said, he's uh, while he's here, he's he's doing exactly what he's what I expect him to do, which is to train well and, and act well. And finally, one uh, team news ahead of the game. Obviously, you welcome back Joe Felix as well, which must be a welcome sight uh, for you. And any players come back from injury at all? No, but they're all getting closer and closer. So Wesley has been training with the team. Um, Dennis Zakaria has been training with the team. Um, we had a little setback with Raheem, he, he had a, a, a kick in training, so we're, we're assessing him. He's probably doubtful for tomorrow, I'd say. Is that a new injury? Yeah, just got a kick and, uh, in, in training on the side of his knee. And um, apart from that, you know, Mateo's trained with the team, but they'll, they'll be t it'll be too soon for him. So it's good news, we've got, um, we've got some options. Cheers, Graham. Thank you. Alex Alvaro. Hi, Graham. How Hi, you? good, thank you. Just how much of a boost is it to have Jao Felix back? How much has he impressed you in training? Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, uh, I think we all saw his impact that he had in, the, <coughs> in his 60 minutes before the red card. Um, you can see his quality, see it every day. He's um, a player, I think, that can make a difference for us. But at the same time, it's about helping him, you know, get into the team, get integrated into the team and to for the teammates around him and for him to understand what we're trying to do. But the signs are really positive. 
how are you going to manage the Benoit Adio Shields situation? Do you feel like you need to test your Champions League defence ahead of Wednesday? No, the most important thing is we focus on West Ham. That's the best way to prepare for any future game. The most important game is West Ham, so uh, we're really happy with Benoit. Um, <coughs> and uh, you know he's he's available and he's in the thoughts for West Ham. And then we have to make another decision on Wednesday, but we worry about that after West Ham. Chelsea haven't won away from home since October. How concerning <coughs> is that statistic and what would you put the run down to? Yeah, I mean, it's not a statistic that we like, that's for sure. Um, and for different reasons. I mean, going away from home in the Premier League is, is not straightforward. Everybody knows that. And uh, the problems that we've been having in terms of um, injuries, etc. Um, but yeah, it's something that we're trying to um, address. We have to start against West Ham, of course. So I've been there with Brighton and had a decent record there, but it's a totally different context, different situation. We need to, it's a London derby. <coughs> um, no love lost, I don't think, between the two teams in terms of um, how that the atmosphere will be, which is great, which is a, it's a good atmosphere for us to test ourselves in and then try to get the three points. Thank you, good luck. Thank you. Moose, talk to um, Hi, Graham. Hello. The away form hasn't been great, but you have won at West Ham this year, you personally, mm. when you went there with Brighton, you won 2-0 earlier in the season. Did that, yep. give you, did that give you a lot of heart? <laughs> Well, uh, as I said previously, it's a totally different context, totally different uh, occasion. Um, I think West Ham Chelsea is, uh, brings a different um, different edge to it. There's been a London derby with you know, relationship between the, the two clubs, uh, fans, etc., etc. It's, it's just a totally different, totally different situation. But it was nice to win there, and hopefully we can do it again. You mentioned about Joe Felix integrating into the squad. Um, how much do you need your squad to, to bed in quickly? I mean, much was made last week. You even joked about it, how many new players you've got. You, you need them to hit the ground running fairly quickly and, and integrate fairly quickly, don't you? Well, if you listen to you guys, yes. Um, and obviously, optimally, I'm going to say yes. Um, of course. I'm not going to say no, I need them to integrate slowly. So What I mean is, how much patience are you able to give them? How much patience am I able to give them? Um, well, it's my job. I mean, it's uh, when you're coaching players and human beings, there's a process that you go through and, and you have to work with that. You have to be patient. You have to understand the context, understand the situation. There'll be um, lots of talk, like I said, after the, after the game, lots of talk around pressure and time. And if, if I'd have had a, a month of time for every time I've been asked <coughs> that question, I'd, I'd be here for about 10 years. So that's just the nature of it. That's just how it is. But the, the perception of being a Chelsea manager is that you're going to be successful, win trophies, mm. or and or get into European competition. So, in, in a sense, there is a bit of a, a finite amount of time, isn't it? Of course, yeah. And 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 I'm not <coughs> stupid, you know. At the end of the day, if the results aren't what this club should get, then I understand. The, and and if I'm the reason for it, then that's that's the that's the job. In the meantime, I sort of again go through the process of working with the players, helping them improve, helping them, you know, come together. It's 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 a compli complicated situation at the moment, but really excited for it. I've, I've got to be honest. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to um, the challenge that awaits us. But again, um, I don't worry too much about you know the the absolute time scale of it all. Finally, the Super League uh, this week. We're all talking about possible new plans for the Super League. You described the initial plans as sad, disturbing and frustrating. Uh, what do you think of the new plans where there will be more teams, more promotion and relegation, not just a certain amount of teams that are going to be in it? Well, my, my, my position hasn't changed in terms of, um, <clears throat> I think, it's the Premier League, it's, it's the Champions League, it's, it's whatever you, wherever you are, you, you should get there on sporting merit and and that's that's my position still Thank you. Nick Godwin BBC Five Live does your position have to change if you're a, a manager of a club that could be involved in something like that uh, it's hard to answer a hypothetical question but no my, I don't think so I think my position is my position and that's it Fair um, you mentioned London Derby is quite unpredictable is that useful for you this weekend do you think they're, they're, they're a little bit of chaos may, may play to your advantage against West Ham. Um, 
I'm not sure. I think whenever I watch West Ham and and certainly I think historically, you know, they're they're always tough games. David Moyes' sides are are, are really competitive and organised. Everybody, you know, everybody knows what they're doing. They've got some really really good players. Tap big spaces well. Um, defend in, in in numbers and defend well. Uh, set pieces strong. So. Um, yeah, for us, it's about understanding the the environment, understanding the fact that it is a London derby, understanding that we have to match whatever um, intensity is coming at us with our own, and and start you know start the game well and and try to take the three points. West Ham have had quite a lot of investment over the last few months and have perhaps struggled to integrate players and uh, and players as a whole. Do you, do you recognise the, the the difficulties that David Moyes has had in that regard? I have no sympathy for him. No, no, no whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, it's a joke. Sorry. <laughs> Too late. Um, you, you were pictured this week having lunch with the owners and Emma Hayes. Um, I'm not expecting you to divulge the details of the conversation, but have expectations changed since the January window? And, and how is your relationship with the ownership changing as as the club invests and progress? Um, I think the expectations have always been the same, which is we want to develop a team that ultimately wins um, and we know that there's opportunities to do to make changes to the team in in windows when they're open so that's that's um, that hasn't changed um, and my relationship has been consistent with them in terms of there's been regular dialogue and regular conversation and and we understand where where we both are in terms of where we see the picture, where we see the team, and we're working together really well, I think, to, to try to keep improving. Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section.